Here I'm driving in a four-wheel drive vehicle while in two-wheel drive, but the steering seems to be binding on tight turns. This leads me to believe that I'm stuck in four-wheel drive, which can lead to severe mechanical issues if not taken care of immediately. It really does not like the pavement. <laughs> What's the rip it right out of my hand? I think we just blew something. Yeah, no more power steering. Uh, we got a lot of smoke coming up on you here. Oh no! That's not good. Oh, there's power steering fluid everywhere. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, we wanna go over why it might feel like your drive line is binding while you're trying to make a sharp turn in your four wheel drive vehicle. This can be something that if not taken care of in a timely manner, can lead to more costly repairs and some safety issues. So it's something that you definitely wanna pay attention to. And if you need any parts, check us out at 1AAuto.com. We'll ship those out to you fast and free. Now let's get into it. Now looking out at this area here, you can tell exactly what was happening while I was driving in the loose gravel. The outer wheels were turning as they should, but along where the inner wheels were supposed to be turning, you can tell that they started to slip a little bit here, they were fine, then they started to slip again, and on and on as we go. Some of the issues that you might find if you were stuck in four wheel drive on dry pavement might be a binding sensation coming throughout the vehicle and the steering wheel, especially on sharp turns. Aside from that, if you are going in a straight line, you're going to start hearing a whining noise coming from your drive line underneath the vehicle. This is typically going to be coming from the transfer case itself. And of course, if you did happen to drive for a little while in four wheel drive, you're going to notice that your fuel economy goes down, down, down. That's because it takes a lot more effort to be able to power your vehicle down the road. Now there are several different types of four wheel drive systems, but typically there's only two different ways of shifting from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. You can either do it electronically, like this vehicle over here, or you can do it manually, like this one right here. Since using a switch is more common in newer vehicles, that's where we'll start. Now inside the passenger compartment of this vehicle, we have a switch right on the dashboard. I can see right here, it says two wheel drive, four high, and even four low. This switch is an electronic switch. Now reaching over here and twisting this to four high is going to send a power signal all the way down to the transfer case. On that transfer case, you're going to have an actuator. The actuator is going to do its job and make it so the transfer case actually powers your front drive shaft as well as the rear drive shaft. When that front drive shaft is actuated, it's going to be sending power to your front differential. Now let's go over a quick diagnosis for the electrical aspect of a four wheel drive system like this. What you wanna do is make your way into the passenger compartment with the key in the on position and switch from two to four wheel drive. While doing that, you wanna be listening inside this area we're listening to hear if this actuates at all. If you can hear this make noise, but you still don't have four wheel drive, that tells you you're having an issue in a different area. But if you can't hear any noise, typically that means that there could be an issue with the actuator right here. I'm just gonna give this a light bonk with a little hammer. And then you just wanna test it again. At that point, if it did actually function properly, that means that you should go ahead and replace this actuator because it's technically binding inside. If you tried testing it and you still didn't hear any noise coming from this, that could mean that you're having an electrical issue either with the wiring or even up at the switch inside the passenger compartment. You wanna make sure that you test for power. Looking at the actuator, you might find that you have one or multiple electrical harnesses leading to it. Either way, whatever you happen to find with an electrical issue, more than likely we sell it at 1AAuto.com. It's also important to mention, to activate the four wheel drive on some differentials, there's going to be a couple different mechanisms. Some front differentials will actually have a fork located inside, which is going to activate the axles on either side of the differential. 
On some trucks, you might find that they have manually locking hubs that connect and engage the front wheels with the front axles. Now it is common that if you try to spin these right here, they're going to be stuck in one position or the other. You can try using some pliers and see if you can move it, but if it's stuck, you could try to use a little bit of penetrant in this area to free it up, but more than likely it's just gonna get stuck again. In which case, you just wanna go ahead and take this off of here, a couple of screws, and you can take it out and easily replace it. And this is how a new one should work. Easy peasy. Now, if you are still having an issue with the four wheel drive, but you can take this and turn it freely, that typically means that you're having an issue with vacuum. If you were to take off this wheel and have a look at the backside of the knuckle, typically you're going to find a vacuum line leading down to it. You wanna make sure that you do have vacuum leading to that area. If the line is cracked or broken in any way, it's not going to be able to function properly. Now we're inside the vehicle with the manual shifting transfer case. Right down on the floorboard is where the shifter is located. Up along the top here, I can see four high, two high, neutral, and four low. Right now, it's in four high. I wanna try to shift it into two high, but it really does not wanna push forward. Now that we're underneath this vehicle, you can see the shift linkage for this. This is not electronic. On this application, you'll find that you have a connecting rod that comes from inside the passenger compartment down to some linkage. That linkage will lead all the way over to the transfer case. Now in between the shaft that comes down and the shaft that goes over to the transfer case, there's going to be a little joint and typically on that joint, it has a plastic bushing that goes in between the two metal areas. Now, if any of this was seized up, it's going to cause wear on that plastic bushing. The worse that gets, the more slack you're going to have in this area. So you might think that you shift it from four wheel drive to two or two to four, but realistically, it's not actually completing the movement as needed. There we go. You can tell on this application that it's extremely rusted. This area right here should actually be an adjustment point where you could loosen this and slide this rod to make the proper adjustment. In the front of your vehicle, you're going to have two axles. On each of those axles, you're either going to have a U-joint of some sort or a CV joint. Either of these, if they're binding, it's going to cause wear and potentially make it so they have movement and even possibly bind up on you. Obviously, you're going to have a front differential as well. Inside of each of your differentials, whether it's your front differential or your rear, you're going to have several gears and you're also going to have some bearings. If for some reason those axles are starting to bind inside of the differential, it's going to cause wear and that's going to be a costly fix. You're also going to have drive shafts that make their way all the way from the differential to the transfer case, whether it's in the front or the rear. And on those drive shafts, once again, you're going to have some U-joints. The transfer case itself is another thing that could potentially get worn because as the front wheels are trying to grip and the rears are doing the same, if they're trying to grip at different ratios, it's going to cause extra stress on that transfer case. And then lastly, what we should mention is if you're stuck in four wheel drive low for some reason, you need to make sure that you don't drive over approximately 10 miles per hour. Anything over that, you're going to cause a lot of stress to the transmission and to the driveline system. Okay friends, I hope you learned a little something about why your vehicle might be stuck in four wheel drive. If you liked this video or learned a little something, go ahead and smash on that like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. That way there are you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. <sighs> get it, Lev, get it. Ah. Get it. Oh, is it oh. It's gonna actually actuate the actuator. Actually actuate the actuator. <laughs> Perfect.